And I, I'd like to read, if you indulge me here, a few pages from my uh, novel, Maya. The story, you need a little background for the just small scene I'll read, is set in India, and the scene I'll read takes place in Benares. In this scene, the protagonist, uh, Stanley Harrington, dreams that he's driving a bus that is about to strike and kill a child. His dream embodies, in a distorted fashion, the memory of an earlier accident and also the memory of earlier dreams. You'll hear reference uh, as well to a dog that Stanley had found dying uh, some months before near a tap where he bathes. And I think this is all you need uh, to know to appreciate this, this, pass this page. I'm on the superfast again. High beams reach out into the darkness like hands clawing their way over hot asphalt, opening a narrow tunnel of light through which the bus pitches forward. This time I know for certain that things are not as they appear. It's nothing but a trick of the mind. I have dreamed this dream before. Has he already died? I lift one hand and feel my lip. No blood. It hasn't happened yet. To my left, just outside the window, a light flashes in the huge rearview mirror, and a jolt of fear rockets up my spine. I shiver and turn away, averting my eyes from the glare. Something's not right. Where's the driver? He's not where he should be, just in front of me. Instead, two arms stretch forward out of empty space, fingers wrap around the big steering wheel. The grooves on its plastic surface are smooth to the touch and slick with sweat. The accelerator thrusts itself up against my foot with a sense of urgency. I'm going to kill a boy. Rang! The alarm rips through the veil and yanks me out of the dream. I reach over and hit the button to shut it off, then lie there on my back watching the still blades of the ceiling fan. No electricity. It's unusually humid for March. The disturbing images from the dream are still vivid in my mind. I'm going to kill a boy. I push the heels of both palms hard against my eyes, rake my fingers back through my hair. A dream, nothing but a dream. With great effort, I drag myself upright and force my legs around, feet off the bed, pausing only a few seconds before I drop to the floor amid my library and force myself into the morning exercise routine. 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 leg lifts, touch the toes, stretch, run in place. My feet pump up and down, toes digging in. Calisthenics finished. I pick up the plastic bucket and towel and step through the door, pulling both panels shut behind me. I can't shake the dream. An eerie sense of unreality clings to everything. Or is it a heightened sense of reality? In the dim light from the electric bulb, the hallway feels too narrow. The curved steel handle of the bucket pushes down into the crook of my fingers as if it were a living thing calling for attention. A repellent odor hangs in the darkness, like the smell of rotted flesh. The dog. I'm still dreaming. Now I'm hunched over in the dank triangular crawl space below the last twist of the staircase. The dog is lying on the concrete in front of me, struggling to move. I'm pushing her with my foot. Her fur bristles against my skin, stiff as wire. This dog cannot remain in this place where I bathe and clean my dishes and take my drinking water. Rang! All over again, the alarm rips through the veil and yanks me out of the dream. I swing my hand over and hit the button hard. My fingers remain where they fell, and I lie still for several minutes, disoriented and apprehensive, staring at the blades of the ceiling fan as they revolve slowly in the hot, dry air. Could this, too, be a dream? Cautiously, I withdraw my hand from the clock, sit up and look around the room. The books stand side by side on the shelves like dutiful sentries. Desk and chair rest quietly at the foot of my bed, waiting to serve. I run my fingertips over the cotton sheet, touch the grain of the fabric and the knotted stitching 
along the hymn, How Would I Know? I turn and slide my legs off the bed, wiggle my toes against the floor, feeling the glaze and the tiles hard against the soles of my feet. By the time I finish the exercise routine, my skin is sticky with sweat. I pick up the bucket and soap and towel, step cautiously through the door, and make my way down the stairs. At the faucet, I pause to scrutinize its dull, brassy sheen. A single drop of water clings to the spout, iridescent, then falls like a tiny jewel into the mouth of the drain. Everything is exactly as it is every morning. I take a breath, inhale the odor of wet stone, then exhale slowly, stoop, and place my fingertips against the cool metal of the tap. 